In this lesson, we're going to be doing a quick overview of the Roto Paint node. Okay, so I'm just starting off in your project files here in 02 underscore begin. And I've gone ahead and read in this piece of footage that is a uh, TIFF sequence for you. So let's go ahead and hook our viewer up to it and I'll go ahead and hit play so you can kind of see what we're gonna be working with. So we're gonna use the Roto Paint node in this project to do several things to our subject's face. And we're gonna be using the Roto Paint node to execute all of them. So you can really start to see the versatility and just the vastness of this tool. I don't think it gets enough credit. This tool is really great and it's also really fun to use once you start getting the hang of it. So let's go ahead and add the Roto Paint node. I'm going to stop the playback. To use the Roto Paint node, you're going to come right up here to draw and we'll choose Roto Paint and you can just drop it on the pipe between your viewer and your read node. And then now, we have a few tools here on the side to be able to use them. If you don't have this tool set, if you're not seeing it, you want to go ahead and hit open or left bracket and that'll open it back up for you or you can hit this little uh, button right there. And so there's just a few tools here that you can use to create shapes or other things with the roto brush. And then over here is where our uh, properties for those different strokes or um, whatever you might paint. Um, this is where you're going to start controlling those a little more finely. So I'm going to X out of the read node there. And let's just really quickly go through what some of these tools are. We're going to be going over them much more in depth throughout the rest of the course. But just so you get a quick overview, if you've already used the Roto Paint node before, you can go ahead and skip to the next lesson. Um, if you're just trying to maybe get better at it, that would be totally fine. But if you've never used it, it's a good idea just to get familiar with this really quickly. Okay, so the first option we have here to the left of our viewer is our selection uh, tools. So we've got select all, select splines, points, and feather points. And this is mostly going to refer to whenever you use a bezier or a b-spline type of shape. Um, so this is only going to be something really that you're selecting whenever you have a path drawn out. So if you've ever used the regular roto node before, you're probably familiar with these different options because the roto node um, doesn't really have any painting features, whereas the roto paint node has all of the same aspects of the regular roto node as well as painting options. So um, it really gives you quite a lot of flexibility. Now we'll move on down to our next option here, which is um, defaulting to add points, which is the first one. So anytime you want to start drawing a Bezier style path, um, you can use this after you've drawn it to add more points to that, remove points. Cusp points is going to take a uh, point that doesn't have or that has handles and take those handles away and make it kind of like a right angle um, and then or really whatever measurement of angle but it'll make it a hard point so they'll intersect without any kind of a curve. Smooth points is going to do the opposite. If you have something that doesn't have a curve and you click smooth points it'll give you some bezier handles to adjust that curve. Open or close curve is going to be if you have drawn a path that doesn't meet, it's not a closed path, or the other way around, if it's been closed, you can click that um, to close the path, or you can click it to open a path to break those uh, points apart. And remove feather is going to basically um, well, once we get into drawing the feathers, it'll make a little more sense, but remove feather is basically going to take the feathered line that comes out from the side of your roto and snap it back to the roto shape the, of the original, which is what the default is before you add the feather to it. Now, the next option we have down from here is going to be the way that you'll start to draw the paths of your rotoscopes. So Bezier is my personal favorite. This is going to give you a lot of control over the way that you draw. It's very similar to a pen tool in other applications that you may have used before. Um, and you're simply able to click and draw with lines and points. Cusp Bezier is going to keep you from making those lines and points with curves. It's just going to be straight lines from 
one to the next. And a B spline is going to be a little bit different. This is controlled a lot differently. You're usually going to have just a few points and then the shape inside of it that's used as your roto is average from the, how far those points are away from each other. Um, and we'll play around with beast blinds a little bit later so you'll start to get to kind of see how they work. And then we've also got these three options which are pretty self-explanatory just from their name. The, they will automatically create these shapes for you. Um, so pretty easy uh, to get started there. Now so if, if you've used the Roto brush tool before, you've, um, or excuse me, if you've used the Roto node before, then you'll have used probably one or all of these three tools. But now we have some that you haven't used before if you're new to the Roto paint node. And the first one is going to be our brush and our eraser. So this brush works pretty similarly to a brush in any kind of a painting application. You'll be able to paint um, with any color or black or white and then you can erase with this tool here any of those brush strokes. But you can also use the eraser to erase anything else you may make with these other three tools below. And the next one underneath the brush and eraser is going to be your clone and your reveal. Clone is pretty, um, we're going to have a pretty extensive lesson about that one so we can get more into that later, but you'll basically be able to take pixels from one area of your image and place them on a different area of your image and you can paint um, with that sample, which is pretty cool. Reveal is a little bit more of a different work flow to get used to and um, it's a, a little bit different if you're used to kind of a the idea of compositing you're putting things on top of your image reveal is almost like you put something underneath it then erase from the image that's on top and then you can see the image you placed underneath and that has a few different uh, pipes that you can use with the roto paint node that you may not have used before you've got this second background here you can see that says bg1 um, so that is used primarily with the reveal tool um, that's that's how that's going to work for you then you've also got your blur sharpen and smear which again pretty self-explanatory we'll be going over that in detail later on these three these are really easy and really fun to use and then we've also got dodge and burn so dodge is going to make images uh, lighter where you brush this on and burn will make them darker and um these default to being pretty extreme so there's ways that you can go in and lessen the effect of these so we'll kind of move on to this now in the rest of our overview so if you want to change the effect of one of these uh tools that you're using you're going to come up right here. So where we have this opacity, it's going to default to one, which if you use a burn and you have an opacity of one, it's going to paint black. So you want to come in there and turn that down to like a 0.5 or even a 0 0.05 for the opacity if you're wanting to get a more subtle effect. Um, same thing for the size. You can um, use this really just very easily by highlighting and then you can hit the up or down arrow keys to change the size of your brush. And and you'll notice I've got, uh, I think this would be the, let's see, the blur here. So I've got the blur. I could go ahead and go in and blur that. And now that I have that larger size. Um, and then we've got our buildup, which is going to control how the different strokes that you create layer on top of each other. And then the effect is basically going to be the strength of something. So how much is it blurring? Right now it's at 15, but I could go in and turn this up to something like 50. And then you see it blurring blurs a lot more extremely. Um, and then over here we have our Roto Paint Node Properties bin. And you can see as I made those three strokes with the blur tool, three strokes appeared here. And you actually have control over all three um, or really all the strokes that you ever make in this Roto Paint Node. It's incredibly powerful with the amount of granular you control you have over every single stroke, every single click that you make. And then we've also got um, a few different options here for our color opacity of the particular stroke so even if you swipe something on and you didn't change your opacity here you can change it over here and that's going to make it uh, a little bit easier for you to see what you're doing as you paint to do it here but if you change it here in the properties bin um, it's easy for you to go back and change something once you've made it so this is where you'll make your changes and this is where you'll adjust things like your color or your opacity as you're painting.
Um, and then we've got a few extra tabs here, which we will go over more later on. But just really quickly, we've got the transform. So if you want to move some of these around over time, we have that option. And we'll be going over that in detail with a tracker later on in this course. And then you also have the lifetime tab, which um, can really trip you up whenever you're working with this tool. I've you know, messed this up. You will mess this up almost every single time when you're first getting used to this node, because anytime you you create something on moving footage, it's going to default to having your lifetime type to be your single frame. So all of these strokes I created are only going to last for this frame one that I put them on. If I go forward to frame two, they're all gone. So I have to go back to um, this lifetime tab, select all of these strokes. So I'll shift select all four of those. Um, and then we'll go into our lifetime type. And you see we have several to choose from here, but I usually choose all frames. And now if I scrub, you can see those uh, strokes are still visible. So um, that's kind of how that works. It's a little bit different you, or maybe even counterintuitive if you would expect it to be there the whole time. Um, but defaulting to one frame does kind of help to remind you if you want to have more control that you do need to go in and change that because you'll notice as soon as you scrub I haven't dealt with my lifetime yet so that can sometimes um, actually be a nice reminder um, that you do have more options than it being there all the time or not being there at all so now that we've kind of just gone over just a very surface view of the roto paint node I'm actually going to go in here and um, delete these blurs that we created so I'll just have those all selected there and then hit this minus and that's going to take me back to basically having a completely uh, start from scratch roto paint node and in our next lesson we're going to start using some of the brush tools and the stroke settings to paint um, with our image and we're actually not even going to be using this as our background we're going to just paint um, like you would in any kind of painting application and then we'll end up merging that with our background later on instead of painting right onto um, this